Welcome to the spoken tutorial on effects of high levels of insulin in the body. In this tutorial, we will learn about why having too much insulin is bad. Harmful effects of excessive insulin in the body. In our previous tutorial, we learnt about insulin and its role in the body. Insulin is a very important hormone. It helps in taking up the glucose from the blood into the cells. Frequently having processed foods and foods rich in carbohydrates is not good. It results in more glucose in our blood. Insulin's action is resisted by the cells if they do not need this glucose. Thus, refusing the entry of glucose into the cells. This mechanism is called insulin resistance. Insulin resistance leads to hyperinsulinemia. It is a condition in which the insulin levels in the blood are constantly high. The body does not respond to insulin adequately or use it efficiently. The cells become less sensitive to the presence of insulin. Let us now look at the various effects of insulin resistance. Some effects have a direct relationship with insulin. High levels of insulin can cause one or more of these ill effects. One of the effects is type 2 diabetes. Let us see how it develops. In the early stages of insulin resistance, blood sugar remains normal. Insulin levels rise when cells are not able to take up glucose efficiently. Once insulin levels rise, more amount of glucose is pushed into the cells. As a result, the blood glucose levels are maintained at normal levels. If insulin level is not checked in the blood, this phase may be missed, as blood sugar levels would still be normal. After many years, insulin resistance becomes severe. Even the increased levels of insulin is not able to do its work. It is not able to push enough glucose into the cells. That is when the blood sugar levels rise and type 2 diabetes gets detected. Another major problem associated with high insulin levels is obesity. Insulin is a hunger hormone. Excess of unused insulin sends signals to the brain. These signals are sent to supply glucose to the body. As a result, hunger is stimulated. Even if a person has just eaten, yet their body will crave for more food. This results in a continuous cycle of hunger and overeating. Let us understand this with an example. Suppose you are not hungry at the moment. Someone then offers you a small portion of carbohydrate-rich food. For example, biscuits, sweets, etc. On eating it, your blood sugar levels and then your insulin levels will rise. These high insulin levels will send a signal to the brain to eat more. That is why many of us are not able to restrict ourselves to small portions. The continuous cycle of insulin resistance and overeating goes on. This can result in obesity. There is another way through which high insulin levels can cause obesity. Due to high insulin levels, the body is unable to break down fat for energy. The body goes into fat storage mode instead of fat utilization mode. Insulin can cause obesity by affecting the signals of leptin. Leptin is a hormone which gives signals to the brain that the stomach is full. High insulin levels can disrupt the leptin signals. 
This leads to food cravings and overeating. Detailed relation between insulin and obesity is explained in another tutorial. Being obese is not the only indicator of insulin resistance. Even lean people can have insulin resistance. Instead of fat gain under the skin, they gain it inside or around their organs. They may have extra fat in the liver, which is known as fatty liver disease. Excess glucose gets converted to triglycerides and gets stored in the liver. High insulin levels inhibit the breakdown of fat. Over a period of time, fat keeps getting accumulated in the liver. This burdens the capacity of the liver to handle fat. Eventually, the person develops the condition called fatty liver disease. Elevated insulin levels also increase the risk of hypertension. It does so by stimulating sodium reabsorption in the kidney. This results in increased blood pressure. With high insulin levels, there is a risk of developing heart diseases as well. This occurs through various mechanisms. First is the inflammation of the blood vessels. Second is the alteration of lipid profile. Next is the formation of plaques and blood clots. Plaques is a buildup of fatty substances on the blood vessels of the heart. Let us understand these steps in detail. Long time high blood sugar levels and high insulin levels cause inflammation. Lining of the blood vessels of the heart gets damaged. Formation of nitric oxide is also impaired in case of insulin resistance. Increased intake of fructose can increase uric acid in the body. Uric acid then reduces the availability of nitric oxide in the body. Nitric oxide causes relaxation of the blood vessels. If it is not formed adequately, it will constrict the blood vessels. This restricts the blood flow and increases inflammation. It also raises the blood pressure. Secondly, the lipid profile gets affected adversely due to high insulin levels. There is a rise in the levels of VLDL and LDL. These are lipoproteins which transport fat and cholesterol in the blood. At high insulin levels, LDL formed is small and dense. They are dangerous for the blood vessels of the heart. On citing inflammation in the blood vessel, lipoproteins come to seal it. VLDL and small dense LDL get attached to the walls of the blood vessels. As a result, plaques are formed which narrow the blood vessels. Supply of blood, oxygen and nutrients gets affected. Some plaques may break down and result in formation of blood clots. This can result in heart attack or stroke. Many people still have misconceptions about the dietary cause of heart disease. They think it occurs because of the fat and cholesterol in the diet. The real culprit is the consumption of excessive carbohydrates. Foods made with a lot of refined sugars and vegetable oils are also responsible. They initiate inflammation in the body. Whereas, good quality fat in the diet helps in reducing inflammation. Examples of good quality fat are coconut oil, ghee, butter, fish, nuts. High insulin levels also accelerate the aging of the cells. This reduces life expectancy. There is a risk of developing Alzheimer's in such individuals. Alzheimer's is a disease of the brain 
that affects memory and mental functions. We know that insulin is an anabolic hormone. It increases cell production and reduces cell death. But if insulin levels are high, it can promote the growth of cancerous cells. There is also a relation between high insulin levels and thyroid dysfunction. High insulin levels affect the conversion of T4 to T3. This results in hypothyroidism. Insulin resistance affects the insulin and glucagon relationship. Let us see the relation between insulin and glucagon in healthy individuals. When the blood sugar levels are high, the pancreas releases insulin. It helps the cells take up the glucose and reduce blood sugar levels. When the blood sugar levels are low, glucagon is released by the pancreas. It acts on the liver to break down glycogen to release glucose in the blood. Glucagon prevents the sugar levels from dropping too low. Thus, glucagon and insulin work in a complementary manner. They balance the blood sugar levels within desirable range in healthy people. This relationship is disturbed in people with insulin resistance. In such people, the pancreas doesn't stop releasing glucagon. This further releases more glucose from the glycogen, hence increasing the blood sugar levels. Apart from these, high insulin levels indirectly cause other health problems. For example, fatty liver, osteoporosis, stress, kidney failure. Pain and stiffness in the joints can also occur. Other effects include damage to blood vessels of the eyes and cataracts. It can also damage the nerves causing numbness and tingling in hands and feet. High insulin also contributes to polycystic ovarian syndrome, known as PCOS. High insulin levels cause excessive production of male hormones. Abnormal hormone levels prevent follicles from growing properly. They are unable to mature and release eggs. As a result, these immature follicles get accumulated in the ovaries. This affects ovulation and fertility in women. The production of sex hormones is also affected by high insulin levels. There are some other symptoms of high insulin levels, such as frequent or constant hunger, feeling tired, confusion, acidity, etc. Skin tags and pigmentation in the neck and armpit region is also a symptom. Impaired lung functions and increased respiratory infections are other examples. Hence, it is important to keep your insulin levels under control. Insulin levels can be checked before all these harmful effects are manifested. A blood test for fasting insulin should be done. Fasting insulin in healthy individuals should be between 2 to 5 MIU slash ML. MIU slash ML stands for Milli International Units per Milliliters. Anything above 5 MIU slash ML indicates increased levels of insulin in the body. This can lead to one or more health complications. Please consult your doctor before taking any tests and medications. This brings us to the end of the tutorial. Thank you for joining.